Good morning and welcome to worship here at Lamington Presbyterian Church. We are delighted that you are with us both in person and those of you joining us online. We want to extend a warm welcome to any visitors among us as well. We are glad brought, God brought you here this morning. There are several announcements for you to note in the bulletin, just a couple that I would like to highlight. The first is that we are hosting um, a family for IHN, now known as HOME, um, and we need some help on May 11th through May 15th in terms of whether or not you would like to cook a meal and take it to the center or the hotel that the family Berta and her sons are staying at, or if you would like to help financially. Um, but we're specifically looking for volunteers for the meals. Um, it's the week of May 9th, but we need, we need sign-ups May 11th to the 15th. If you're able to cook for that, please um, sign up for that or let Meredith Scott know. Also, we're preparing for Basket Day on June 5th, and to that end, we are in the process of collecting all of the wonderful goods that we will be able to sell. And so there's a list of um, donation requests in the bulletin, and if you have any questions about that, you're welcome to ask Carol Cummins. And um, I want to welcome back Bess Planer, our wonderful soloist and handbell choir director. Um, Bess is here today, and if anybody is interested in joining our handbell choir or reinvigorating it um, as we begin to emerge from uh, post-pandemic life, please talk to her after the service. We are delighted to have her here today, and I'm excited I finally got to meet her. I know she's been in this community for a while, but we're glad to have you back in person, so thank you for joining us. And now I invite you to stand um, as you are able, and together um, let us call ourselves to worship responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
good shepherd and knows our needs. God leads us into green pastures and beside still waters and sustains us when we are in trouble. But consumed by our own interests, we don't always see God's presence, nor do we attend to our neighbors in need. Our God is merciful, eager to forgive, if only we would repent and confess our sin. Confident in God's mercy, let us offer the good confession now before God and one another using the prayer of confession. God of tender compassion, we confess that we have strayed from you like lost sheep. We have rejected your goodness in favor of what the world offers, and we have lived not for your sake, but for our own. Forgive us for failing to love you and others with our whole heart and mind and strength. Redeem us that we would live for your glory alone. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue in a time of silent and personal confession. Amen. The psalmist tells us that God's goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Friends, believe this good news. God's mercy is sure. God's goodness is with us from now and to eternity and will fill our lives and empower us to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And as forgiven and freed children of God, let us joyfully pass the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. You may, be you may be seated. Will you join me in prayer? Almighty God, open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to hear, see, and know your word as we read the words of Scripture. Empower us with the wisdom to hear, see, and know what the Spirit is saying to us, the church. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Listen now for God's word to you this day. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, 
and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Here ends our first lesson. First John chapter 3 verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, my preschool-aged son participated in a safety drill. It wasn't just a fire drill, but also a lockdown drill, which is unfortunately necessary these days. The teachers don't want to alarm the young children to the frightening realities of our world, so they are very creative in their approach to keep them safe. They invite the students to participate in a story. 
A wild animal might wander into the school, they say. The best way to help the animal find his way out is to be quiet and hide. Teachers are amazing. Like shepherds caring for sheep, teachers remain alert, mindful of any wolves that may circle the school and threaten the little lambs. They aim not only to teach, but also to protect the sheep. Preschool kids tend to flock together, and they learn quickly that it behooves them to pay attention to their teacher. Just as children need to be guided and led into maturity, did you know that sheep actually prefer to be led as well? According to a farming friend of hers, Preacher Barbara Brown Taylor learned that sheep are hesitant to go anywhere that the shepherd has not gone first. The shepherd goes ahead of the sheep. The sheep depend on the shepherd to show them that everything is all right. Shepherds bond with their sheep. They build trust. A shepherd could walk around an entire sleeping flock of sheep peacefully. But should an outsider come in and step foot into that fold, utter chaos would ensue. The sheep would be startled for they don't take to new people like they do to their shepherd. A good shepherd abides in the sheep, knows them intimately, and tends to them with compassion and nurture. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. He knows us. He abides in us. He binds himself to us even when we try to disconnect from the flock. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. This past year, we have felt more divided as a people, both by the nature of the pandemic and the unrest in our nation. We distance ourselves from other people's problems because we feel flooded with our own. We lose perspective and turn away from our neighbors as we worry about how we will defend ourselves against the wolves circling us. So easily we go astray from the life that we thought we were leading, including our life in faith. We are hesitant to let down our guard to put our trust in anyone, or to find a safe place to dwell or abide. Last week I read an article in the New York Times by Adam Grant entitled, There's a Name for the Blah That You're Feeling. It's called Languishing. Grant defines languishing as an empty feeling when we are stagnant and somewhat aimless in our lives. He writes, it feels as if you're muddling through your days, looking at your life through a foggy windshield. Grant places languishing smack dab in the middle of the emotional scale. It ranges from flourishing to the peak of well-being when we know that we matter to others, all the way to depression in the valley of ill-being when we suffer a despondent sense of worthlessness. Yet we somehow safely hover above the pit of despair and languishing. The pandemic has caused much grief to be sure, but this prolonged feeling of anxiety mixed with instability has done a number on our spirits, which no doubt affects our ability to practice faith. To say that we find worth in our identity as children of God means that we have to live as if we believe it. Languishing the absence of well-being when we feel disengaged, but we safely hover above a pit of despair. In scripture, over and over again, God promises to be present in our lives. God makes a covenant with us and remains true to us regardless of if we flourish, languish, or feel depressed. 
God sent Christ to care for us and show us how to live, even through the valley of the shadow of death. When we find ourselves feeling numb or disconnected, we are like lost sheep. Instead of being in sync with the good shepherd, we tend to wander away. We find ourselves in want of something that we think we need. A false promise disappoints us and we forget a simple truth. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not be in want. In 1 John, we read that all who obey Christ's commandments and abide in him, he abides in them. And by this, we, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. If you look at a biblical dictionary, you'll learn that to abide means to stay, to tarry, or to dwell. Christ abides in us, but do we truly abide in him? For if we abide in him, then we are thrown into the mix with all the other sheep. To abide in him means we can't dominate over others. We can't judge them. We can't neglect them. To abide in him includes surrendering to his guidance to embrace his sheep and exist as one flock. This is the action-oriented part of our relationship with Christ. He invites us to follow, he commands us to love, and then he teaches us to care for our brothers and sisters in need. Despite inevitable disagreements, we are accountable to the flock. When we abide in his fold, Peace and humility reign over chaos and self-righteousness. No longer do we feel like lost souls trying to figure it out on our own or heal ourselves. He restoreth our souls. Thomas Merton was a contemplative monk who published many works, one entitled Thoughts in Solitude, He wrote a poignant prayer that encapsulates feelings of languish, a need to be restored, and a yearning to abide. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may not know nothing about it. Therefore will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Our Lord Jesus Christ abides in us. Whether we feel ourselves lost or on the right path, Whether we are flailing around or feeling blah about our choices. Whether we wallow in grief or feel disengaged. The risen Lord meets us right where we are. Will we accept him as our good shepherd? 1 John implores, so let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. When we tarry with Jesus Christ, no longer do we languish or lament, but we take a permanent seat at a table where we are nourished and strengthened for the path ahead. 
the psalmist contemplated the gift it is to abide in the Lord. And we seek to echo his response. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able. And together let us affirm the faith of the Christian church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Will you join me in prayer? God of the resurrection, you free us from all that enslaves us and keeps us from the fullness of life you desire for all of your children and for the earth itself. We praise you for our green earth and pray that you would show us the best ways to care for it. We pray for your church throughout the globe amid this pandemic. Empower us to serve you faithfully and be the place where wounds are touched attended to, released, liberated, and redeemed. We pray for the people in every nation throughout the earth. May we seek your common life and work for justice and peace for all your people and not just the few. We pray for all who are suffering from the coronavirus, for the victims and the families of those who have lost loved ones recently. Enable us to be in solidarity with all those whose rights have been abused or rejected so that we may be a witness to justice. We pray for those whose lives have been traumatized by gun violence. May we be agents of nonviolence in places of deep brokenness. We lift up all those who are in grief and in mourning, that you would comfort and strengthen them. We pray for those in recovery, that your healing touch would be upon them each day. We pray for all those who are worried or suffering from anxiety, for those who languish in our midst, for those who need a dose of hope and joy to remind them of the gift of life. Open our eyes to see your spirit working among us and help us to see where we play a part in tending for your flock. Empower us to live according to your great commandment, to love you with our whole being, and to love ourselves, to love others, and to love you. Help us to trust that your future is struggling toward realization, even in our midst. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has given freely to us the goodness of God's creation. We now return a portion of these goods in the hope and in the promise that our resources will serve God's commonwealth in our church, in our community, and in the world. Our giving looks different in a time of pandemic, but whether you give online or you mail in a check or you put a gift in the plate in the back, we pray that now is also time that you would offer yourselves, that you would recommit yourself to live out your faith as we meditate on the doxology. Redeemer God, we pray for the wisdom to be good stewards of the gifts you have given us. Take these gifts, we pray. Bless and use them to benefit others and to empower our work for justice, peace, and reconciliation in the church and in the world you so love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Your charge comes from 1 John. Let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. 
And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you and those whom you love wherever they are this day and always. Amen. Thank you.